In this video, I'm going to discuss what exactly you should do in Lost Ark once you hit level 50. This is a question I get asked on stream constantly. I just hit level 50. I don't know what to do. Tell me what to do. There's so much to do. So in this video, I just want to discuss and kind of give you a general direction of things you should do once you hit level 50. The very first thing you should do is progress the main storyline until you can't anymore. Without getting into spoilers about the story, you're going to reach a point where you cannot progress it any further until you hit gear score 260. So once your item level is 260, you're going to be able to continue the main plot, but you won't have item level 260 when you first get here. Uh, you may be 50 already when you get there, you might be slightly below, but you should. your main goal should be getting to 50 and then getting your item level up. So once you progress the main story until you can't anymore, we're going to focus on getting your item level up. Now the way you do that is by equipping better gear and upgrading your gear. You'll notice that jewelry and ability stones don't affect your item level, so it's only your weapon and armor that's going to affect these things, and the way you improve them or get that up, we're going to discuss that a little bit. So once you've reached that point, you're going to head to Northern Vern if you're not there already, and the very first thing you should do is start doing some Chaos Dungeons. You can do them in a group if you like, or you can do them solo, they're very quick. Not only are they going to give you upgrade materials, but they're going to provide you with a set of armor and a weapon to choose from that should be much higher than where you are now, then that's going to be your starting point. Once you've acquired a weapon and some armor pieces, uh, hopefully a full set, from the uh, Chaos Dungeon, you're going to head to the Honing NPC in the southern part of the city there. You'll probably see a lot of players around him, and you can begin upgrading your weapons and armor there. Um, when you first start out, you have a 100% chance to succeed, probably for the first 5 or 6 levels, 7 levels-ish, and then that percentage chance starts to go down, and the higher and higher you get, the more that percentage chance goes down. However, you should still have a 100% chance while you're making your way to 260, so this should be fairly easy to do. If you run out of upgrade materials, you can farm more Chaos Dungeons, or you can go do a Guardian Raid, depending on what your item level is, how high you want to go. And there's also island quests, like on Shadow Island, Starlight Island, a couple other islands that have a lot of materials rewarded for the purple quests you do on those islands. So you can actually quest for these materials if you'd rather, and they give a lot. So it's kind of fun to do. They have kind of cute storylines in some cases, and they can provide you with a lot of materials if you kind of get burnt out on doing Chaos Dungeons for a while, which will probably take you a little bit before you, you know, stop enjoying it. So that should get you to 260 rather easily, from which point you can progress the main story again, and eventually you'll hit another wall that says you need to get it to 460. So you'll come back and start doing these activities again, or maybe you already hit 460 from just continuing because you were enjoying it. But now you can do Chaos Dungeons at higher item level, or you can do Abyss Dungeons, or you can do Guardian Raids. All of these activities will provide you with stuff. And as you do the Abyss Dungeons, you're also going to get um, items that you can trade in at the Abyss Crafter, which is you know not too far from the Honing Guy uh, in the southern part. That will allow you to turn in these items in order to craft a set of a set armor, like that has set bonuses. It's your first; it'll be your first purple set probably by this point. You can turn in these little orbs, these night orbs you get from doing these Abyss Dungeons, and you can craft yourself a set of nice armor and a nice weapon. At this point, you're probably going to be wondering, okay, well, I have this armor and this weapon, but it's way lower level than the stuff I have, so it's not as good. What you want to do at this point is you want to head over to the Honing NPC and actually use the transfer button there. There's a button that allows you to gear transfer, and you're going to transfer your plus whatever on your armor and your weapons over onto the new armor, so you didn't waste all those upgrade materials. This will allow you to make that new armor and that new weapon stronger, and you'll be able to have that set bonus. So make sure you do that. It just costs a bit of silver. It's not really expensive at all. The next part I want to talk about is engravings. This is uh, something that's going to start happening to you at level 50. It's a big part of your build, and it can be kind of overwhelming when you're first starting, but it's actually quite straightforward when you understand what you need to do. So there are actually two types of engravings. You have your class engravings, which are specific to the class that you're playing, of which there are two different ones. And then you have your sort of all-purpose engravings, which are the same across all classes and have different things they do, from buffing your damage to maybe buffing your attack speed or movement speed or, you know, improving your defense or making your heal stronger or whatever. These things are the same across all classes. Now, you actually have two slots on your character where you can slot two engravings. Um, but you may not have any engravings when you reach this point. You probably won't. Um, so what you need to do is you need to get engraving tomes uh, that you can consume in order to gain engravings that you can slot. It's a little confusing, but bear with me. So to be able to actually slot an engraving, you have to consume 20 uncommon tomes of that particular engraving. So let's say it's, you know, one of your class engravings. For me, on my paladin, uh, I'm prioritizing DPS, don't at me. 
Uh, so I'm prioritizing judgment. I would have to consume, which I already have, 20 uncommon judgment tomes in order to be able to slot judgment in the little uh, equipment slot for judgment. I can slot two times if I want uh, to get added benefit. But if I want to slot something else besides judgment, so maybe judgment takes one slot, I actually need to consume 20 uncommon tomes of another one. Maybe it's my other class one, or maybe it's uh, one of the ones that are, you know, the same across all of them that, you know, look, oh, there's a damage one. Let me slot that one. That's good for my build. Um, I need to go acquire 20 of those tomes. You get those tomes from doing basically the same activities, from doing um, Abyss Dungeons, from doing Guardian Raids. I think you get them from Chaos Dungeons as well. If you see them on the list, you can get them. But another really great way to get a bunch of them early is to do the tower also located in Northern Vern. I think between about level 6 to 20, you will gain a whole bunch of uh, uncommon engravings, both class and regular ones. So that's a good place to start to kind of get you going. It doesn't take much to get, you know, through the one, the levels in the tower that are going to provide you with these uncommon tomes. So make sure you go do those as quickly as you can and, you know, press up as high as you can. You're restricted by your item level how far you can go, but go as far as your item level will let you go. Additionally, if you really feel like spending some gold, you can buy some off the auction hall if you're just looking for like that one more you need to hit 20 in, in uncommon. It might be worth spending like a couple gold to get one. I don't usually advocate spending things you can get really easily, but, you know, in order to get you going, spending maybe a couple gold to just round out that 19 to 20 so you can actually slot it might be worth doing. So once you've gotten Uncommon 20, you can slot them in the slot, and you can in continue to improve those engravings by getting the rare versions, which are blue. So once you consume 20 rare versions for one you've already consumed 20 Uncommon one, the effect of that, uh, you know, engraving you slotted will actually be improved. So if you want to get more, you know, a better improved version of that engraving, you need to consume the Uncommon, then the rare, etc. Now... This is where things get a bit tricky. So you can slot engravings uh, in the engraving slot, but your ability stone also and your jewelry also have uh, engravings on them. So you need to pay attention to what those are. So when you're getting your jewelry and your ability stones, you're going to want to look for engravings on them that are the one that you want. Because the higher points you have towards an engraving, which you can see on the engravings tab in your equipment, if you hit P and then go to engravings, it'll show you your progress to each threshold. Like, Basically, they go 5, 10, 15. At those breakpoints, those engravings become stronger. So you want to aim for those. You know, If you have 3, you don't get any effect. If you have 5, you get the first effect. And if you have 7, you still have the first effect. So you want to aim for those breakpoints when possible. But you want to look through your jewelry, not only at the stats, to make sure it's the stats you want. For instance, if you're trying to make a DPS build, you, know, you probably want crit on it. But then besides crit, you're going to look at those engravings and see... You know, what engravings are on there? Is that a better engraving than what you have? Is it one you don't even care about at all? Maybe it increases your damage shield, but you don't even use damage shields. Maybe it's, that's not what your class does. Or maybe it increases your healing, but you're not a bard or a paladin. Um, maybe it increases your damage, and that's something you really need. So you need to pay attention to these as well when you're getting your equipment from your Chaos Dungeon, and don't just look at the stats on it and go like, oh, it has more stats, that's better for me. Like, it has higher crit than my crit, so it's better. You also need to look at the engravings, and again, these are going to be randomized, so you're going to have to get lots of these in order to get the exact ones you want. So what really matters on the engravings is not what you have slotted in your engraving slots, although that progressed directly towards the points in each engraving. It's your total engraving points, which you can see again by pressing P and then going to the engravings tab. You want to try and aim for the break points where possible, and in some cases, you may only need level 1 for something to be as effective or, or to be very effective. For instance, on the Paladin, for Judgment, you get your best bang for your buck at Threshold 1, meaning you gain 15% increase in damage and punishment skills, and at level 3, it's only 25%. So you get 15% just for hitting level 1, and then it's 5% on the next two levels each. So you probably don't need to go past 5 if you're trying to optimize there, um, and there may be like things like that on other classes, so you need to pay attention to that as well. So this takes us to Ability Stones. So your Ability Stone, you need to take to a Ability Stone Cutter. Again, this isn't very far from the Honing Stone Vendor. And basically, what's going to happen is it's going to show you the engravings on it. It's going to have two positive and a negative. You want to look for the two positive ones on it that benefit you. Uh, the higher quality the, the Ability Stone, the more you know engraving points you're going to get to try at it. Again, there's an RNG element here because basically... You're going to click a node and it's going to give you a percentage chance to succeed. And if you succeed 
that ability stone's going to get plus one towards that engraving. But if you fail, you miss it and it's locked out. And so, you know, maybe you go all the way through and you get plus five to something, but maybe you could have had plus eight with better RNG, or maybe you could have had plus nine. Um, or maybe you find an ability stone that's got one good, in, you know, engraving on it, but the other one isn't very good. Maybe that's not as good as another ability stone that's got two engravings you really want. So what you're going to kind of do when you're doing your ability stone is you're going to try and put points in the best one that you know makes the most sense for you when you have a higher percentage because each time you fail that percentage increases and each time you succeed it goes down so start with the one you want most and as the percentage goes down as you succeed maybe start putting them in the secondary and if it starts going down even more put it into the negative one you want to fail the negative engraving you don't want to succeed so you want the lowest percentage chance possible on the negative engraving so that you fail it and you don't add a negative engraving to yourself, if that makes sense. So as you uh, as you get lower percentage, put it in the negative. As you get middle percentage, put it in the second most one. And as you get a uh, higher percentage, put it in the top one. There's going to be a point when you're doing it that, you know, the highest percentage you get is about 55% or so. So think about that as you, the further you go into the uh, ability stone upgrades, you know, you're going to gamble a bit. You're going to have to hope for some high RNG. And this is why you get a lot of loot in the game is because you're going to be doing this over and over until you get a good RNG on a good one with the engravings that you want. So the very first thing when you get some ability stones is go over to the ability stone cutter, check out what they are, see if they matter to you at all, and if they don't, dismantle them. Because you can actually exchange the uh, parts from them in order to get more ability stones from that vendor if, there isn't, you know, if they're not useful to you. So head over there, check out what they are, see if they're useful, deconstruct them if they're not. And then keep farming until you find the one that's best for you. And then start, you know, doing the thing with it on the Ability Stone Cutter to try and get as many points as you can and at the least negative as you can. From that point onward, it's pretty much just doing the endgame activities and improving, upgrading your equipment, getting materials to upgrade your equipment, and unlocking new sets that you can then transfer your upgrade over onto and getting more powerful and doing harder content. Which content you want to do is up to you. Abyss dungeons tend to have weekly locks, so you're not going to be able to just do like the same Abyss dungeon over and over again to farm stuff. So you're probably going to be doing a lot of Chaos dungeons. You're going to probably do some Guardian raids. Um, you can keep progressing in the tower as your item level increases. Um, some islands have high level um, areas that you can do as well for questing and things like that. So that's pretty much what you do from that point forward. And obviously you can continue on with the main storyline after 460 as well, which I highly encourage because that way you unlock your second awakening skill. But that's basically the gist of it. Another thing I didn't mention is skill runes. You'll get these as you do these activities, but you can slot skill runes into your skills that add effects to them, like maybe they make them bleed, or maybe they reduce the cooldown time. Maybe they reduce the mana cost to them. So as you get these skill runes, make sure you slot them into your skills. There are often rewards for these activities, because that will also further tailor your build. So that pretty much concludes this guide. If you still have questions, if I skip through something too quickly, or you still don't quite understand, or you have other questions, please post them in the comments. I'll try and answer them as quickly as I can. Um, I, I just wanted to get this guide out because people have been asking me lots of questions about what to do. Um, this is just kind of a quick and dirty guide. It doesn't have like all the exact specifics, but it should be enough to get you going.